Hi, I'm Bruce Asher, and in this video, I've been looking at saving your projects and exporting audio in Cubase. So here we have a project in Cubase. Now it's very important to make sure you save your work. And there are a few different ways you can do this. If you've already set up your project and you just want to save as you go, you go into the file menu and click on save, or you can do control S. And it will save it under a different name. Essentially what this is doing is just saving over what you've already created. If you want to create a new version, file and save as will be allow you to actually save it with a different name, the project files. It won't change any of the media or anything like that, but we could update it and call it 2A, so save it 2A. We can also do things where we can actually save a new version. And what this allows you to do is actually save it in a separate location. So you can actually store the project in a whole new folder and it will give you the option to actually copy some of the media over. But the main thing, the critical thing here is you're saving your work as you go and normally you'll save it into that existing project folder. That's somewhat different from exporting. Now exporting is when you actually take what you're working on, so the audio you're listening to, and you're not saving a new Cubase project, you're actually saving it as an audio file. And for this, you go into the File, Export menu, and we choose Audio Mixdown. You can, if optionally, choose to bounce down or export individual tracks or selected tracks, but really, if you want to get the whole mix, the main thing is to go to the Audio Mixdown, and click that and you'll be presented with this box. Now what you've got here it actually details what's going to be exported and in what format. Normally for a straight stereo um, export, in other words the mix of your track, you'll use the stereo outputs and you'll choose a project name, a file path and you can also choose and here it will show you, give you a preview of what that file name is going to look like because you can do some interesting customization options which will include things like project name, channel numbers. So that's really when you're going to be exporting lots of different files from a project from different tracks. Another important element of this window is the file type. You can select to export it either as a WAV or in a bunch of other formats which don't compress, in other words, don't remove any of the any elements of the audio, so they will sound exactly as they would do as if you're actually hearing it in the project. Or you can choose a compressed format like MPEG, um, so MP3, Windows Media Audio, and so, and so on. And so they will actually produce smaller file sizes, and that means it's probably a little bit more mobile in terms of just quick listening, but it's not going to be that full quality. So in this case, let's just export an MP3. I've chosen it to be bit rate, which is the highest bit rate available. I've chosen high quality mode, and then I just click on export audio. And then you can see it's already uh, got a file name of that type that already exists. So I'm actually going to do overwrite, or I can create a unique file name. Let's use create unique file name. So now it takes time to export the audio. I'm actually going to go now into the folder where that file has been located. And you can see I found the name that already existed. And it's actually changed the name slightly to an 01 to that original file name. If I play that now, that will allow me just to play a piece of audio. I won't need Cubase on the computer that I play it from. In fact, it's playable from pretty much any device that can play MP3s, which nowadays is pretty much anything. Uh, the important thing to realize here that is if you want to export audio at full quality, make sure you've got that WAV element or AIF, but particularly WAV is probably the most common in terms of it being universally available. And then you can choose to export it that way. And that way you get a nice quality audio and it means it'll be optimized to be listened to uh, and it actually give you a true representation of the final mix. Something worth pointing out is that you actually can choose how that audio exports. Very often, uh, and I find the most uh, convenient way is you set your locators. So in this case, going from bar one to bar nine, and then you go to export and you can actually set how that actually works. So basically you can see here that what it's doing is actually going to be exporting really between those locators uh, and that, that's the critical thing when you're actually exporting it. You can see the display update in real time um, and by clicking on this update display if you've got some particular plugins or processing which is external you may have to export it in real time so it runs it much slower but with usually when you're actually using Cubase with the built-in plugins it will actually do it a lot quicker um, so faster than it would take to actually play back that track normally. So normally you can leave those things unticked let's let it do its thing export it and you end up with a nice file you can play back later on. So in this video we looked at saving in Cubase the conventional save the save as for creating new versions and exporting audio so you can create WAV files or MP3s of your finished tracks.